Welcome to News Click. Recently, Indian Air Force asked Hindustan Aeronautics Limited to not go ahead with upgradation of its Jaguar fleet. One of the reasons cited was that the price that the US company Honeywell was asking for their engines was exorbitant. And between 2013 and 19, the, the unit price had doubled. This means that you, uh, Indian Air Force's squadron strength, which was 31, will further come down. And there is fear that it will be 29 squadrons, which is far below the 42 squadrons that the Indian Air Force claimed that it required to meet two war uh, uh, scenario. We have with us D. Raghunandan of Delhi Science Forum, who is also a defense analyst with NewsClick to take us through some of the issues that come up now in the wake of Indian Air Force's decision to discontinue with Jaguar upgradation. Welcome to NewsClick, Raghu. My first question to you is, now that our squadron strength is slated to fall even below 31, where does it leave the Indian Air Force in terms of meeting its requirement and what should it do? This is no surprise either to the Indian Air Force or to the government. Uh, the Air Force has been talking about this and if you read government documents including in the procurement process, the defense planning process, the expected depletion of strength of the IAF fleet hmm. has been known for more than 15 years. Because everyone knew the MiG was reaching the end of its life. Mm. Everyone knows that the Jaguar also is reaching the end of its life. And the upgrade of the Jaguar has been spoken about now with new engines from Honeywell and so on is really a, uh, a desperate attempt to extend the shelf life of what is really uh, an aircraft which is done and dusted. Uh, the IAF is virtually the only Air Force left in the world which is still operating Jaguars. Mm -hmm. We are buying old uh, used Jaguars from other countries just to cannibalize those oh, aircraft really? and use it to keep your aircraft uh, afloat. And the reason you're doing that and the reason you continue to fly MiG-21s after several upgrades is because your numbers are down to such a low figure. This should have been anticipated uh, a long time ago. It was anticipated, but the necessary actions to overcome the situation were not taken. For the usual reasons, our procurement processes are so tied up mm. uh, in um, uh, red tape, in bureaucratism, in delays, uh, etc., that you are left now holding the baby of this uh, problem. And the fact of the uh, obsolescence of the MiGs and mm. the Jaguars were brought clear even during the uh, clashes we had across the LOC with Pakistan, when with all the aircraft at your disposal, IAF was still sending MiGs uh, across yes. the border, one or two of which were shot down there. There was no sign of the uh, Jaguars uh, to be used in those uh, roles. The Sukhois were not used because there is no forward basis for the uh, aircraft. So I am afraid this is a sad story of lack of preparedness uh, both by the Air Force and by the government. You're referring to what, what Indian Air Force did in Kargil in during Kargil, the limited war in Kargil. Using the Vinages the way we did, yeah. using the MiG-29s the way we did, which has not been done uh, mm. before to provide cover for the, the Mirage and so on. If we are not going for upgradation and as you pointed out that there are also limits beyond which that's you right. can't carry on with upgradation, that's no solution. It's yeah. just a stopgap me yeah. measure. Now, Indian Air Force had been keen on acquiring, I mean, they were alert and they sounded the uh, alarm way back in 2001 
and they pitched the, the claim for getting uh, 126 that's right. medium uh, range that's right. fighter jets, right? That's right. So, as far as Indian Air Force is concerned, it was very clear and it pitched a claim and it that's right. brought it before that's the right. political authority. But the delay subsequently resulted in cutting down the order size from 126 to 36. That's right. Now we know the whole scam about That's Rafael right. and all, although it's not a, nobody talks about it now, but there were many unanswered questions which had to do with Rafael. Now with 36 acquisitions of Rafael and the, the first delivery is expected next month, and there is talk in the newspapers and the media that there is likelihood of government of India going in for another 36. That's right. Two questions come to my mind. One is, is that sufficient? Uh, does it serve India's, it may serve India's immediate need, but does it help in the long term need where we have to build up our indigenous capability yep. in handling? And second question uh, which flows out of it, Raghu, is also, are there any options? Because today's newspapers report the, and Hindu say claims that Russians are willing to offer their uh, Su-57, Sukhoi-57 yeah. yeah. uh, to India, which as you pointed out earlier to me before the interview that in fact this was precisely what India and Russia were supposed to jointly right. produce. So uh, let me take these two questions uh, separately. First on the Rafale. Uh, the Rafale is a deep penetration uh, strike aircraft, although it's described as a multi-role mm. uh, aircraft, it can perform multi-roles, but the Indian Air Force was uh, really envisaging for deep penetration strike mm. uh, roles, uh, which is a role which the Jaguar uh, was originally acquired for, and this is a much advanced version mm -hmm. of that naturally, mm -hmm. being a contemporary mm -hmm. uh, aircraft. It will also in many ways replace the roles that the Mirage uh, okay. were, uh, were fulfilling and the Mirage also is going to near its end of life in the next decade uh, or so. Therefore, the IAF had uh, called for 126 Rafales which could then play these overlapping roles between the Jaguar and the Mirage okay. aircraft of deep strike as well as the possibility of its use in multi-role uh, aircraft including air superiority. Now with the reduction of 126 to 36, yeah. which as you know we've conducted many of these interviews mm -hmm. earlier on the Rafale deal, I've always described as a penny wise and pound foolish Correct. Uh, measure. You thought you were saving money by buying 36, but now you realize you need the 126 yes. uh, aircraft. It is not for nothing that the Air Force mm. had projected that. And they are still insisting on acquiring 114 more. And they are still uh, acquiring, but that's going to be another five years down the line. And the and whole process, procurement process. Procurement process. And if you are changing the specifications for the 114 hmm. compared to the 126 that you wanted earlier, does it mean that you are satisfied with just two squadrons of deep penetration strike aircraft, which are going to replace even now what you have is more than twice the quantity of Jaguars yeah. that you do. Clearly, this is very bad planning, hmm. which the government uh, for its own reasons, uh, cut short the order and mm. bought only 36 Rafales, did not also exercise an option uh, which is mm. normally there in any contract. You also, when you uh, acquire for aircraft, you additional. say we'll get some additional ones and retain an option for that. Indian government did not do that either and now is again going in for another 36, which is going to cost more money. And if you buy two lots of 36 and that comes to 72, the day may not be far when you'll have another lot of 36 being ordered, then you might as off well Off the have. shelf. Off the shelf, you've lost the opportunity for technology transfer, you've lost the opportunity for domestic 
manufacture mm. and you're still staring at a shortage of uh, so what about this offer uh, of su57 yeah. so now let's come to the su57 offer india a few years ago turned down the uh, discussions were going on between india and russia fifth generation fighter aircraft for the fifth generation fighter uh, aircraft it was in those days designated as the pac fa uh, yeah. aircraft which having now matured uh, gone past the development stage is now called the su57 uh, the deal that was being talked about then was a joint development between india and uh, russia for which india claims that russia was asking for too much money hmm. uh, and therefore it, india did not go in uh, for it my suspicion however also is that uh, the indian air force also in its own wisdom seems to have come to a conclusion some time back that they had had enough of soviet russian mm -hmm. uh, hardware and were preferring to go the western route mm -hmm. now the problem with that is okay the western aircraft may be 10% or so better uh than these they may have better avionics but you can always fit in avionics mm. uh later after all if you look at the world today next to the united states russia is the biggest and most powerful uh air force in the world they are not playing with toys mm. uh they are playing with they are using advanced aircraft the indian air force has long projected a requirement of three types of aircraft light aircraft for introduction for interdiction which is what your lca would perform mm. medium aircraft which is what we were looking for Rafale. with the rafals or whatever mm. and the heavy aircraft which is what you've got your sukhoi is already doing mm. this gap that we had in the medium aircraft is what the fifth generation aircraft would uh they deliver. will okay. so if you ask me this has always been the ideal mix your lca your pack fa and now su57 and your um, uh, sukhois mm. with this your entire air force fleet is more or less complete so even now my recommendation would still be mm. to go in for this offer because it would cost you per aircraft 50% of what the best american aircraft would cost mm. you an f35 uh, or whatever which is far too expensive you'll end up buying very few of those aircraft mm. it will not fulfill your requirements end up being a white and elephant and end up having 36 rafales mm. uh, kind of scenario all over again so this would be a good offer i think one should take it up uh, let me come to you refer to the light combat aircraft yeah. that is being uh, developed and manufactured by hal now there is something very peculiar about it although our requirement is for 284 tejas aircrafts uh, in pipeline apparently the order book in pipeline is stuck at 83 tejas yeah. which is yet to come through yeah. uh, the entire order yeah. so we don't know how long it will take before yeah. hl gets it yeah. the second point is that hl uh, has been pushing for setting up and they they were sure that they'll set up another second assembly line sure to increase that's right the number of aircraft that they can manufacture but now there is another move of foot to ensure that the second assembly line is passed on to a private player now with hl's own uh, uh capacity under utilized because sukhoi is the last batch of 12 aircrafts the last yeah. batch is with them once they completed they have no more so yeah. that sukhoi closes mig closes down yeah uh the rafal deal that they were banking on heavily is not come to them that's right and they the only thing which is with them is the helicopter and this light combat aircraft yeah. now even if the light combat aircraft is the second assembly line is passed on to the private sector what happens to hal then in this whole uh again i think this is short sighted thinking on the part of the government uh in wanting to push for 
private sector involvement not just in component manufacture or major component manufacture but in uh, system integration uh, while I can accept an argument saying HAL's uh, capacity is limited. If you want a quicker uh, production, you need to expand uh, your production base and therefore involve more private players. I would involve more private players in making major components mm -hmm. and enhance HAL's ability as a system integrator rather than duplicate the system integration facility between HAL and others. That would be the wrong way to go. Mm. Uh, private parties should build up their cap capacities from large component manufacturing to system integration rather than prematurely being thrust into system integration roles. So I would really go that route. HAL already uh, is working with a large number of private partners. Uh, you can enhance the role of these private partners in major component manufacture and enhance the capacity of HAL to s integrate the system and push out a larger number of aircraft. And by the way, uh, the restricted number of uh, Tejas being ordered right now uh, by the Air Force is because the Tejas also is in the stage of being, uh, of getting ready for an upgraded version with a more powerful engine. Mm -hmm. uh, so the remaining part of those 200 odd orders are going to be for the advanced versions okay. of uh, the Tejas, which is yet to fructify uh, completely. And the second part of it is the uh, lines of HAL which are closing down because of the retirement of the MiGs and the uh, completion of the Sukhoi the uh, yeah. order are the uh, Koraput Nasik uh, lines of which HAL has always kept the Russian part of the manufacturing isolated from the western parts with HAL, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Lucknow usually doing all the western uh, okay. designed aircraft and Nasik and Koraput handling the Soviet and Russian parts. So it's that part which is currently now running out of uh, steam. I am not sure it's going to be that easy to adapt those facilities to manufacture these uh, aircraft unless you retool entirely. Okay. Thank you, Raghu. That's all for this time. But if you have any queries or you have any clarifications uh, that, you, uh, that you seek or you have any feedback, do write to us. Thank you for watching News Click. Keep watching News Click. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.